Hi, I'm Glenda Chong. And I'm Otelli Edwards. Hi everyone, I'm Jill Newbronner. I am from a TCS alum, 1995. Yes, you heard that right. Oh. And uh, we're here to look at some of our old videos. Wait, 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 let's clarify. 1995, I was not even in the company yet. I was like still in school. Anyway, it's Stephen here. <laughs> and today, we will be revisiting old videos mm -hmm. of ourselves. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh, no, a bit of that, a bit of that uh, I don't know, 90s or 2000 yeah. feel. I got this hairstyle before Jennifer Aniston made it famous on Friends. Woo! Woo! How, how long did the short hair last? Like, how many years was it? Uh, it was a good couple of decades. Okay, mm. Steve maybe is a little bit more uncle now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the youth. Collagen. <laughs> I know, and, and you know the collagen, right? Look at it now. Like, now I wish I had the <laughs> chubby cheeks. The chubby cheeks. Ah, there we big. go. My short hair. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is bad. I can't. I can't look at myself only for short periods of time. Yeah. <laughs> what, what what animal are you again? You're. A... Uh, if I if I tell everybody, you know how old I am. Oh come on! <laughs> like you're. How? Okay, so this was the morning show. We had this weekend edition, and my gosh, that suit is ugly. Why did I even choose that color? And I tell you the thing that's consistent with uh, Steve. His dad jokes. Yes. Yes. He's, he's still trying to pull off quite yes. a few years dad jokes, yeah. ago. He's already, he's already started it. Singapore will be spending some twenty million dollars for the Trump Kim summit. This was Trump Kim summit. Yep. This was uh, epic and iconic mm. for us because it of was course. almost a twenty-four hour uh, cycle That's right. on that. And I remember that I was on air when he just arrived in Changi Airport. Okay. Touched down, got into the car, and. This leader has mm. got four men flanking the car and running along with the car. Right. And I actually had to describe that to the people on oh, the okay, uh, okay. to say what is going on. And it's the first time we saw anything like that. Inuka. Hey, Inuka. I, I just want to quickly say, because that Inuka story, I, I just re remember it being a very... Uh, one of those where I hadn't quite expected anything from the episode. This is mm. about the polar bear we had in Singapore Zoo mm. who was getting old and eventually yeah. passed away. And I remember this was uh, one of those few moments when I actually uh, did tear up on TV. Uh, and it was real. I mean, because I was speaking to a zookeeper who had raised him and he was telling me this story and I was like, oh. Yeah, it, it just moves me, so. Six members of a Thai soccer team have been rescued from the flooded cave. So memorable. By that time, we had correspondents all over the ground, uh, all over the region, rather. And it was so good that we can cross to them to get the feel that very yep, second. Yep. Uh, and I remember what was um, memorable about the story was how the world basically got involved, yeah. you know, trying to rescue um, um, these boys and their coach, right, yeah. from the cave. I mean, the story was was moving, that's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve boys and coach who ended up trapped in this flooded cave. I remember when I was presenting it, it it's very it's very emotional and um, sometimes you have to, I don't know about you but Tati, but sometimes I have to actually pause, take a breath and then <sighs> steal myself and then present. That's what I have to do sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes I can be on the verge of tears but yeah. I know it's coming so that I, I pause Spoiler and I think the survivor. reason the reason why we have to hold back these emotions, right, is the fact that because we have to be professional, we don't want to cause alarm, and um, yeah. So when I see images of like starving kids mm. or kids running for their lives because a bomb just dropped, right, those are the the scenes that always move me. And like just talking about it in my head, actually standing on ends because certain images stick, yeah. right, and that. That's part of the job. That's kind of what we have to deal with every day. And so we are humans after all. We're not like <laughs> totally robotic. Travelers into Singapore who exhibit COVID-19 symptoms may be given swab tests. The COVID period was surreal. Very surreal because mm -hmm. uh, as one of the essential services and yeah. one of the pillars yeah. of, of Singapore, uh, the media had to keep running, right? Yeah. They had to keep running. That's right. I guess nobody really knew what was happening yeah. and we were all learning uh, each day that passed, mm. we would learn something a bit more. What's it like breaking news on air? I think that's that's one of the most challenging aspects of yes. our job, which also makes it interesting because your adrenaline, right? You're, yes. you're going based on your adrenaline and lots of coffee, obviously. <laughs> Whenever we have unbreaking um, news, yeah. I would stand by, Glenda. Yes. Email is coming your way now. And so you have to open the email, but the music, you can hear the music playing in your ear already, and you're opening the email, you're opening one email, you're opening two emails, you're proofreading it, and the music's playing in your ear, and next thing you know, you hear the studio director saying, Q, and you're like, oh! I just digested that in like two seconds. <laughs> 
that. It's like it's like when you're hurry to like finish your your meal because you're gonna go on air and then with a happy meal you're the but you're just you're putting it all in your mouth. What's your most memorable story? Memorable story, uh, many, but one that will always live in in my memory is. Uh, the time that I followed our then president Ong Teng Cheong on a state visit to the UK as well as the Czech Republic. So he had a very uh, small uh, press corps that would follow him and during that visit he had an audience with uh, the late Queen Elizabeth II and I had the opportunity wow. to go inside Buckingham Palace yeah. wow. and meet the late Queen okay. and it was something I'll never forget. So the most uh, memorable was in 2008 when I was a Shanghai correspondent and uh, it was my first time covering a natural disaster and that was covering the Sichuan earthquake and that was very very scary for me because I've never felt um, you know aftershocks before and it still sticks in my mind I just see the buildings the devastation, the destruction, and for us to be airlifted in there, you can just imagine they couldn't get out and no one can get in. So that was the most memorable and very sad. I remember when uh, I had to cover that story, I told my cousin, I said, um, don't tell mommy and daddy, my parents, uh, don't tell mommy and daddy I'm doing the story and I'm going to the earthquake site. And my cousin said to me, uh, you're going to be on TV. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, by then it's too late. By then it's too late already. So I remember um, when, I, when my parents found out, ever since that day, every night, I kept texting them and calling them and telling them, I love you. I don't think I've said I loved you so much to my family before. Any advice for aspiring news presenters? Have a certain sense of curiosity. Um, be a bit bold, be a bit thick skin, you know, I think it's about just being willing to say I don't know it all and I'm out there to discover and to find out and uh, that, will, that will lead you in the right direction. I guess um, stay informed, think critically, um, be curious and listen, like learn to really really listen. Just want to say thanks for all of you for watching and you know supporting us throughout the years and I think a lot of it has come now on social media like the way you're watching this clip. It's been a real uh, ride. I've been here not as long as you but <laughs> still enjoying every moment of it. So thanks again guys and we hope that you will keep on watching CNA. Watch us.